friends, I'm Jess. A welcome to the Hex Library, where I post reading, writing, book, and planner related content a couple times a week. Today is going to be Battle of the Booktubers week three, and I will be reading two books given to me by Booktuber F. <laughs> If this is the first of the Battle of the Booktuber videos that you are watching, you are way behind and you need to go back to the past. I will link some videos for you down below, maybe a playlist. Basically, this was a competition put together by Danny at Danny Dabbles, where there are four rounds of four competitors each round going against each other. Each round will have a winner, and then at the end, there will be a battle where four those four winners go against each other and we will find out who is the best recommender of the books on the booktube hello raja i guess we're going to be holding raja for a little while booktuber f is my third week we've already done booktuber d and booktuber e if you missed those those will be linked down below my fellow competitors were Sam from Samantha Donovan, Krista from Books and Jams, and Jolene from Bookworm Adventure Girl. They, along with Danny, will all be linked down below. If I mention any other booktubers during this video, they will also be linked down below. Raja will not be linked down below, but she will probably be here for the majority of this video because she likes to be cuddled. Yes, you're a good kitty. I had four books given to me by Booktuber F. If you've been here for the past few weeks, you know that we gave each other four books apiece. I had The One by John Mars, The Unmaking of June Farrow by Adrian Young, The Measure by Nikki Ehrlich, and I'm gonna read this one because it's a long one, Vera Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers by Jesse Q. Sutanto. Basically, we were given four books to read. If we had read them before, we were only reading two. So if there was one that we had read previously or if it had triggers that we were not okay with, then we could skip and go on to the next one. I did not have that issue with this list so I went with books one and two so I read the one and also the unmaking of June Farrow. Unfortunately I did not vlog any of this because I was actually house sitting this week and it just didn't really work with what I had going on so this is basically just like a wrap up of my thoughts and feelings and my reviews. So that be how the cookie crumbles sometimes. I read one of these books in one sitting so like there was nothing to vlog I just read the whole thing. It was a time. As for the four books that were recommended to me, I have heard of all four of them before. They are all four books that I'm interested in reading. They've actually, most of them have probably at some point or another been on my TBR to read and then had been like, I just didn't get to them that month because I don't own them or whatever the case may be. They weren't a priority. Can I help you? What are you doing? What's up? Do you want to be upside down, girl? You want to be upside down? There you go. Is that better? Is that better? You okay now? You should go, baby. Did you seep? Rock a by Raja on the treetop. <laughs> she didn't like that. First I read The One by John Mars. I will say I started reading this early in the morning when I was getting ready for work. By midday at work I was done. I laughed, I squealed, I giggled. I had the absolute best time. So The One is basically set in this world where scientists have figured out how to use DNA to match you with your one true match. Uh, the one who is the one for you. It has caused some problems because, you know, some people take the test and figure out that the person they're married to is not the one. Some people who are heterosexual get their match and find out that it's someone of the same sex. Um, some people will get their match and it's someone who has, is no longer living or, you know, you're 25 and your match is 89. Like, there's a lot of things going on um, that makes it questionable. And the book also gets into topics of how people who are matched and are in like considered happily matched relationships get better insurance, better job positions, better possibilities for housing and things like that because people think that if you're with the one then you're not going to have that many disruptions in your life and therefore you are a more dependable and reliable person. How true is that? Well you have to read the book and find out. Right. So the book follows five people. The first is a lady who is single 
and she finds her match and discovers that he is dead, like recently dead. The second match is a serial killer. Uh, he, he's got some things going on with him. The third character, I believe she is in the UK and her match is in Australia. And he's like, says that he doesn't have a lot of money and he doesn't have a lot of technology. So they've not really um, talked in person, but they do a lot of like texting and communicating in that way. Um, but she decides to uproot her life and go find him in Australia without telling him first. That's a good decision. The fourth is a man who is happily with his fiance. Um, they have friends who were matched and their friends kind of make fun of them because they say like they've never taken the test and so they haven't matched with anyone. Um, so they take the test to find out if they're matched with each other. And the fifth is uh, someone who is a very prominent um, rich lady basically who has struggled finding someone who is just into her for her. And so she finds her match so that she can find someone who will actually be interested in her. Literally, I think there's a, um, I think like the quote on the top of the book is like a, a twist on every page. And I won't say there's a twist on every page, but literally every point of view chapter you get, <laughs> something happens. And like I said, I laughed, I squealed, I cackled, I shouted, oh my god, like I was at work. <laughs> going oh my fucking god are you kidding me I had the best time reading this book it was so much fun um again that's why there's no updates because I can't update you while I'm working I'm not supposed to be able to something books while I'm at work but you know I was by myself I can do that on Fridays because I am typically by myself and I can listen while I you know just pause it while I answer the phone do whatever and just work on my paperwork while I read but I was having uh, the best time literally just having a time all of the plot twists all of the like learning about the characters, learning, you know, how finding the one really affected them. It is a wild, it was a wild time. And then we get to the end, like there's so much death in this book. <laughs> so much death and destruction. And then there's some happy moments, but not a lot. But I just, I had a fantastic time reading this book. Like it was absolute pure drama in the best way. And I did not, I knew I would like it. Like I, like it, obviously it's been on my list is when I've been interested in reading just from hearing people talk about it. So like the social commentary aspect of it is something that I was interested in. So I knew I would like it, but I did not expect to like it as much as I did. Um, I ended up going with a 4.5 out of five stars. I'm telling you, like it was the absolute best time. Honestly, if you like social commentary books, if you like things that are high drama, cannot recommend this enough. It was an absolute blast. And then my second book was The Unmaking of June Farrow. This book is about June Farrow, who comes from a long line of women who she believes are cursed. Basically, they kind of go insane. They start to see things that aren't there. They start to have hallucinations. Her grandmother says it's kind of like they exist in two worlds at once. They have a lot of issues with like that aspect of just seeing things and talking to people who aren't there and really struggling with that. And June was um, left by her mother when she was a child um, and her grandmother ended up raising her and her mother disappeared and no one really knows what happened to her. Had I read this a little more closely at any point because I had never really looked at the synopsis of this book. I just know that I typically enjoy Adrian Young's books. Sky in the Deep is one of my all-time favorites so I hadn't like some of her books I've really enjoyed and some I haven't but Sky in the Deep is one of my all-time favorites so I always plan to read her books regardless of like what the topic is but had I read this, had I read the synopsis, I probably would have never put this on my uh, want to read list because it deals with romance and timelines and I do not like romance that has like time travel aspects. It's just one of those things that never really works for me but I didn't know that it had that so I guess that's on me. I read about the first 25% of this and then decided to DNF. Two reasons. The first reason being at that point I had figured out that it was time travel and relationships across time and the other reason being at 25% she had met three people who could have told her what was going on and given her the information that she needed. But all of them said, well, I can't tell you. You have to figure it out on your own. 
I can't tell you. You have to figure it out on your own. I don't know what you know yet, so I can't tell you anything because what if I tell you something you don't know yet? And that to me is one of the worst plot devices that you can put in a book. It is so annoying when there are people there who can tell you everything you need to know and they refuse. And you put that in the book. Like, if you want someone to be shady or hiding something or whatever and them just not say anything, that's one thing. But to have a character flat out say, well, I could tell you everything so that we don't have to spend the next 80% of this book you struggling to figure it out on your own, I could, but I don't want to. And the fact that there are multiple characters that do that, no thank you. Uh, we're going to talk spoilers about this book also because I looked up some spoilers and I feel like if you are interested in this book that spoilers might help you decide um, how you want to do this. Okay so spoilers somewhere on the screen and then when the spoilers go away you can come back. So at 25% I was again pretty much fully decided that I was completely done with this book and I wanted to look up some reviews to see kind of what was going to happen if things went the way that I had expected it to. And a lot of people that I know, people that I have, you know, friends with that are reviewers that I trust, have rated this book four or five stars. And so for me, I was like, okay, what am I missing that everyone else got? And just from kind of talking to people, it was very much like a, it was a in the moment in the, of the time kind of thing. Like it was the right book at the right time, which I know happens because I've had books like that before too, where there's nothing about it that would say that you would like it, but you just read it at the right time and it's like the perfect book for you. So what happens is basically June comes from a family of women who can travel through time through a red door, but they can only ever travel three times. And at the end of the third trip, they basically have to decide which timeline they want to live in. If they want to live in their present timeline, where they have existed their entire life or if they want to stay in the past with the man that they love but they forget about their future, the, their life in the future timeline. So June is back in time in the 1950s. There is a author's note about this book because there is basically no black people mentioned. The idea that this book is set in the south in America in the 1950s and for some reason black people do not exist questionable. I don't know what the author's note says but I do know some people did discuss that there is an author's note that talks about like basically why this is and it's just kind of like a I didn't want to write them is pretty much the consensus of that. I don't think that's what she was going for but that was kind of the consensus that I took from the uh, reviews that I read. But basically she does decide to say in the 1950s and the idea that you would a want to say in the 1950s because there's a man that you love I'm sorry like that just doesn't work for me. I get being in love with someone and I get them being important to you but is not that the definition of what we tell women to look out for with an abusive relationship? Like do you not say you know that they separate you from all of your friends, they take away all of your pastimes, they take away your freedoms? Like she's literally leaving 2020 whatever where she has a best friend who has been her best friend for 30 some years. She has um, friends who she's been friends with forever. She has a um, an older lady who is like, who who she loves, who, you know, helps take care of her, which ends up actually being her daughter. But that's neither here nor there. That's one of the people who won't tell her anything. I could tell you everything about you and dad, but I'm not going to. And also at some point, this bitch is going to have to decide what she wants to do. I don't know. Anyway, like she leaves every person she's ever known and loved and, you know, is a part of her life behind, knowing that she's going to forget about them just so she can go live with this man in the past. And not just going to live with a man in the past, but you're going from 2020 to 1950, where you no longer have the right to vote, you no longer have the right to own uh, your own credit card, you can't own property, you can't, like, the idea that as a woman you would choose to leave 2020 to go live in 1950, where you had no body autonomy, no nothing, like, you literally are just property of your husband at that point. I can't imagine, I don't know anybody that I know in my real life who given the opportunity to go live in 1950 and be with the love of their life, who would do it? I just don't. I don't know anyone who would choose to do that. And the I that is completely absurd to me that that would be a decision that you would make. I could understand if it was like the future, maybe you were going to the future where, where we had more things. You know, if you had went from 1950 to 2020, and you were like, yes, I'm going to stay here for this man. And, but even then, like you're leaving behind your family, your friends, everyone you've ever known, everything you've ever known. And I just don't, 
it's one thing to be stuck there. Like, if you're stuck there, you're stuck there and you just got a fucking deal. But the idea that you made the choice, the conscious decision to do that is wild to me. Absolutely wild. I was, if I had finished reading this, it would have been a hate read and it would have been a one star. Now, would a one star have been more of a, a, more points than a zero star? Yes, but I have no wish to hate read. So, I DNF this, 25%, I walked out the door. That's the end of the spoilers, basically. It's not worth my time or energy to read that book. It's just not. Again, I understand why these were recommended to me. A, they're on my want to read list on Goodreads. And I have rated Adrian's books five stars in the past. Like, logistically, it makes sense that this would be a book that I would enjoy. I'm an idiot. And had I read that, I would have not picked it up. Like, that's the reason why I haven't picked up Ashley Pawson's Seven Year Slip, because as much as I loved The Dead Romantics, I absolutely loved The Dead Romantics. When The Seven Year Slip came out, I was like, ooh, romance, time travel, no thank you. So like I knew, I should have known that this wasn't a book for me, but I didn't pay attention. Basically that's where I'm going with that. Who do I think recommended these to me and who should I apologize to? So I am pretty sure that these were recommended to me by Krista. Krista, I apologize. I misled you with the second one, okay? It's, it's, it's my fault. It was on my it was on my one to read. I really like Adrian Young. Theoretically, should have enjoyed this. That's me. That's me. That was all me. I did that. That was all me. This was um, definitely opposite ends of of the world for me. If you made it this far in the video, leave me an arrow emoji down below for Cupid from the one. If you've read either of these and you would like to converse about them with me. That's what the comment section for is down below. Comment section is for down below. I don't know what English I just said, but it was not very good English. Also, again, there'll be all kinds of links down below for Battle of the Booktubers. If my memory serves me correctly, we will be doing the live show for this on November 2nd at 3 p.m. EST or EDT, or that could be a time change weekend. I don't know if we'll still be daylight time or either way the it'll be on Danny's channel she'll have it set up so that you can go ahead and add it to your reminder list um, but it will be on November 2nd and you can see who won hopefully me and uh <laughs> we'll go from there uh because honestly I just it's been a time I've really enjoyed this competition thank you again Danny for asking me to be part of it I had a fun time even though week three was I mean, I did, I had, a, I had a fantastic time. The second book, not so much, but yes, I had, a, I had a good time. Uh, that is all I have for today. If you don't want to miss anything else we have going on in the library, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.